If you're looking for ways to address cognitive impairment, God knows there are easy answers out there. Fad diets, pseudoscience, anecdotal alchemy. Well, for people looking for that kind of thing, they've come to the wrong place because I don't believe in any of that. More importantly, my special guests today don't believe in that either. What they offer you instead is a comprehensive, science-backed approach to healthy lifestyle choices that they are using every day to help their patients with MCI slow, halt, or reverse cognitive decline. So if that's what you're looking for, then let's hear from them right now. Hi, I'm Tony Deering of GoCogno.com, the website for people with mild cognitive impairment. My guests today are Drs. Dean and Aisha Shirzai, co-directors of the Alzheimer's Prevention Program at the Loma Linda University Medical Center and authors of the book, The Alzheimer's Solution. This is the third of three videos drawn from a Facebook Live I did with the Shure's Eyes in a private Facebook group for people with MCI. The conversation I had with them was profound and I think life-changing for the people who saw it. And today, I'm saving the very best of that discussion for last. Today, we're going to talk about how you can take their neuro plan which stands for nutrition, exercise, unwind, restore, and optimize, and apply it to your life in ways that give you the best possible chance of seeing the kind of amazing results that they're achieving with their patients. So let's dive in with what I consider to be seven essential takeaways from the Shure's Eyes. Where you say, we don't agree that people are lazy or incapable of change. The people we meet every day are terrified, and they'll do just about anything they think yeah. will help. Doctors have very little faith in people for them to be able to change their lives, change their lifestyle. And I think that's one of the reasons why they withhold from sharing that information, knowing that you know people may not be able to change their lifestyle. But we don't think that way. I think everybody has a right to know what they need to change in their lives, and we empower them. But, but uh, each individual has a range of risk factors that vary from, from person to person. Uh -huh. but, but, but to me, for Jane Doe, it's exercise. For John Smith, it's sleep. For Bill, it's mental activity, yeah. and so on and so forth. And what does personalization mean? Where your weaknesses and where your strengths lie is where one has to start. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. your number one is different than my number one. Where I need to focus on the most at this point in my life where I've been plant-based all my life, well, not all my life, the last 15 years. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've, I've fallen off the wagon a little bit on exercise because I recently injured myself. So guess what my number one just became? Exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise one. So yep. as you, you understand that if we're talking about personalization, all five of those elements are extremely important. Mm -hmm. And the number one has to be your number one. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't focus on that, if you have sleep apnea, and you're not addressing it. You could be eating a truck full of kale and, and uh, avoid all the butter in the planet and you still won't heal your brain. So you have to address your needs and, and your strengths. Right. Uh, I would like to actually start by yeah. saying that, um, you know, out of the, um, the five elements, nutrition, stress management, and sleep they are the providers of the right environment for the brain to cleanse itself and to heal itself. Exercise and optimization of cognitive activity actually grows brain connections. So you need all of these elements at the same time for the mm -hmm. brain to start uh, you know, getting better and for mild cognitive impairment to either be halted or reversed. 
Right. So nutrition seems to be a very quick and an easy way to improve brain health because it's something that we do on a regular basis. You know, we're exposed. It's the most important environmental exposure. We're exposed to food three or four times a day. So whatever you eat will either break the brain or make the brain. And from all of the studies, you know, whether it's the mind diet or the DASH diet or the Mediterranean diet, it's the plant components that stand out. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I studied this in a large population, the California teacher study. I actually got an award from the American Heart Association for it too. Because when you think of, say, a Mediterranean diet, most people think that it's, you know, it's essentially fish and cheese and some wine and sitting next to a lake and listening to some, you know, what Greek yeah. music. But it happens to be the unprocessed greens, the beans, the berries, the vegetables, the fruits, and the whole grains that provide the right kind of carbohydrates, the right kind of proteins, the right kind of fats. So we say, you know, try to eat as much as you can of unprocessed plant foods and try to reduce processed foods. Because when you reduce processed foods, you automatically reduce salt, you automatically reduced processed sugar, which is, you know, in everything. Even hot dogs have sugar in them. Mm -hmm. um, you automatically uh, reduce the kind of processed wheats and grains that increase your blood glucose or they're high, they have high glycemic index. Mm -hmm. And also reduction of bad fats. Fats are not bad. It's a type of fat that we consume. So a reduction of saturated fats and cholesterol that mostly come from animal sources and increasing unprocessed plant uh, fats like nuts and seeds and avocados, and those are amazing. The definition of exercise has changed. People used to think just going out or a walk in the park is also exercise, you know, and we hear it all the time and we say that's wonderful, but that's meditation. Uh, exercise has to be strenuous. Mm -hmm. uh, strenuous exercise, the one where you have a hard time finishing a sentence and you break a sweat, uh -huh. and that's a beautiful way to define it, yeah. is essential for brain growth and brain protection. Mm -hmm. um, and doing about 30 minutes of strenuous exercise four to five times a week is a great is a great goal but you know the next step of exercise is what people are actually doing so if somebody hasn't exercised at all the first step is to start exercising for five minutes a day mm -hmm. and then slowly and gradually incrementally increasing it to that to that goal um, and and um, we, we always say bring exercise into your homes mm -hmm. don't get a gym membership because you know you have to get dressed up and some of these gyms are like quite fashionable you just have to spend a lot of time getting ready to go and you know external uh, weather or other circumstances may prevent you from doing it when we say get some dumbbells in your living room get an exercise mat See if you can invest in a recumbent bike because that takes care of balance issues and a lot of, you know, joint issues that individuals may have and try to do it at home and get it over with so that you can resume anything else. And as far as staying active, the idea of sedentary behavior, sedentary behavior is the new smoking. So if someone exercises for 30 minutes a day, but then they have a desk job and they sit behind their desk for about seven to eight hours. Forget about that 30 minutes. It actually negates the positive effect of exercise. So getting up every hour and moving around is also very important. Yeah, and, and, and let me just say one thing. In, in terms, I, I just loved your book so much. You're starting to get that impression. Uh, but what I love is how real you keep it. Uh, so, so it's very practical. It's very pragmatic, yes. the things you talk about. Go it ahead. has to be. I mean, why does behavior not take place? Behavior is abated, is stopped because it's too many steps. Mm -hmm. Too many steps from your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So how do you actually start something is by reducing the number of steps. For somebody who hasn't exercised in months, for them to go get a gym membership, get dressed up, go there, start a whole program, and do it on a regular basis, failure. You know, you know how we know this? We have actually spoken to three major gym owners, and they actually oversell the gym memberships by 80% or more mm -hmm. because they know that that, many per that percentage of people never show up to the gym. Yeah. yeah. Make your living space your gym. Anything extra is extra. 
so so let me ask you this. I was going to ask this question, but one of the people watching jumped in and asked it. I think it's the one of the most important questions on the mind of anyone with MCI. It, it's this. Is it ever too late to start? No, never. Never. It's never late. I hope you found this three-part series as helpful as I did. I learned so much from the Shure's Eyes and I appreciate their generosity in sharing their message. Now there are links below to the first and second videos in case you didn't see them. Of course, everything they teach and their entire neural plan and all sorts of worksheets and guides to help you individualize it for you are available in their book, The Alzheimer's Solution. I enthusiastically recommend this book, but I want to make it clear that I do not receive any financial compensation for doing that. And in fact, the Shurzais themselves don't profit from this book. All of the proceeds go to support their Healthy Minds initiative. Thanks again for joining me today. I'll see you next week. Until then, as always, be kind to your mind.